On August 23rd, 2024, I woke up at around 4.30 a.m. to travel about 9 hours south to Kentucky with my friend Train Place 123 to go see a friend I saw earlier this year, Rails of Kentucky. We would stay at a hotel in Somerset, Kentucky and spend a week shooting trains in Kentucky, Tennessee, Georgia, and Ohio. So join me as I embark on my first rail fan trip to Kentucky and see everything that is offered. Our first stop of the trip would be in Northeast Pennsylvania, which was originally just a stop to see the Lakeshore Railway Museum, turned into a quick run over to the NS Lake Erie District for NS-29P. We stuck around for Amtrak's eastbound Lakeshore Limited number 48. With two General Electric P42DCs in the lead, the train is racing out of Erie, Pennsylvania with the next stop of Buffalo, New York. We were making our way back to the I-90, but as we were doing so, we drove right by a GE test train, testing out two brand new CSX CM44AH rebuilds. So we went to the next available railroad crossing and caught it there. These are rebuilds CSX has been doing with their 1990s GE AC4400 CW locomotives. Notice the leader in primer paint. We also remember GE put their battery unit, number 3000, out in the open, so we looked around for it and found where it was, parked outside with a few old locomotives. This was our last stop as we then got back onto the I-90 and headed west towards Cleveland. Then we turned south towards Columbus, Cincinnati, and our final destination of Burnside, Kentucky. 
Our only stops from this point forward were for gas and lunch. We made it to Corbin, Kentucky at around 4.15 p.m. to meet up with Rails of Kentucky. And right as we arrived, CSX B710 was pulling north out of the yard with two CSX GE locomotives along with two CP GE locomotives. So we headed north to London, Kentucky. Here was an old LNN searchlight still in active service. But here's an interesting fact about this spot. This used to be an old siding that was ripped up. Or well, not the siding half. Yes, CSX indeed ripped up the main line instead of the siding. So now trains will call out diverging signals like medium clear, just like B710 did this afternoon. Due to nothing else on CSX and Corbin, we decided to head over to Burnside, Kentucky, where an NS Depot is located. They shut off power to this depot about two years ago, and it is still a mystery as to why they did that. The first train on the NSC known TP was NS-196, a manifest out of Chattanooga bound for Fort Wayne, Indiana, with a trio of GEs powering the train, including an increasingly rare NS-9 second. NS has less than 200 9s in service. The next train we catch is NS-170 coming north, with an unexpected surprise trailing, the Savannah and Atlanta Heritage Unit, the 18th one that I needed. Reports said that it was going south, but I guess the person got the direction wrong, and it was going north instead. So I'm just happy with the unexpected surprise.
The light was fading fast, and it was already dark within 45 minutes. The next train we caught was NS-142 heading north, with an NS-ET-44 leading an NSC-6M. They stopped here for a crew change at Burnside because they weren't going to make it to Danville. The last train of the night shows up, and it's 177, manifest coming down from Chicago and going to Chattanooga, Tennessee. With a pair of C6Ms on the head end, they pull up to Burnside to work the two sidings here to drop half of their train. Mid-train is a C6M nose-to-nose -nose with a Jeevo.
We went down to the other end of the Burnside sidings to catch the head end pulling past the siding so they can drop half of their train. This is going to wrap up this part of Kentucky trip. Um, tomorrow I will be uploading day two. So I hope you guys enjoyed this video. If you did, make sure to leave a like, subscribe as always. And uh, yeah, thanks to Train Place 123 again for making this possible. And I guess I will see you guys next time. Goodbye.